the Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Welcome back everyone. We're here at EMC World 2014. We're at the Sands Convention Center in lovely Las Vegas in the back of the Palacio Hotel. We've got a unique situation here. We've got actually two cubes uh, running here at EMC World. So this is where it all started about five years ago. As you know, we take the cube out, we go to the big events, we talk to the people you want to talk to, we extract the signal from the noise, and uh, we're excited to be back for year five at EMC World here in Las Vegas. And I'm here, I'm joined with my special guest host, Steve. Thank you, Jeff. Great to be back on theCUBE. Very exciting to have two CUBEs running here today. So, uh, you know, a lot of stuff going on here at the show. We got a social media lounge going on. Have an alumni lounge this year. A lot of, a lot of excitement, a lot of energy. We're at the keynotes this morning. So, uh, I'd like to introduce our, our first guest here. Um, this is Eric Poole from Green, Green Heck. Green yes. Heck? Green Heck fan. So why don't you uh, help us set the stage a little bit and tell us a little bit about what is Green Heck and then let's dive into the sure. technology a bit. Uh, we at Green Heck Fan, we're a, a private manufacturing company located in the Midwest, uh, right in central Wisconsin area. That's where our corporate headquarters are. Um, we are the premier manufacturer of large air movement equipment. Um, so fans, ventilators, uh, different uh, dampers and louvers that you find in, in non-residential constructed buildings. So a lot of buildings like, like this, for, for example, these large convention centers, um, that's kind of our bread and butter. So uh, we uh, uh, are number one or number two within each market segment that we uh, manufacture for. So in fans, uh, we're number one uh, player in there. Being a privately held company, um, we have a, a lot of challenges with that and a lot of growth that we've had over the last couple of years. Um, that really affects IT and, and my role at Greenhack is being in charge of the technical services, the infrastructure team and group there. So you guys national or, or uh, international? We are international. International. Um, we've got uh, facilities in uh, Saltillo, Mexico where we uh, manufacture for the Mexican market. We also have a facility in uh, China right outside of Shanghai. Um, and we also just recently opened up a facility in India right outside uh, Delhi. In all of our international locations for a manufacturer, one of the unique things we do is the products that we manufacture like in China or in Mexico, they're not shipped back to the US. They're actually meant for the China market or for the Mexico market and now this new India market. Excellent. Too. Great. Can you give us a little sense of like how big your IT shop is and some of the challenges you're facing? You said you're growing, things are getting big. Right. You bet. Um, our IT shop is uh, fairly small when you look at the size of the company. We're uh, about a $600 million company. Um, as I mentioned, privately held. We've got three main uh, divisions that we have underneath the same GreenHack group umbrella. And for IT, uh, we're a shared service, so we have to function across all three divisions. So, um, like most places, instead of having one boss, we really have three bosses uh, that, that have to dictate what IT spends money on. Don't we all? Um, <laughs> right. Um, the uh, size of our IT department total is around 75 employees. Um, within my team, we have uh, 13 dedicated to the infrastructure, which uh, includes our operation er operations area, which is our help desk and our desktop group. And then also our server team, um, our network team, our data center group, uh, that includes the servers, the storage, the backend networking, things like that, that all falls underneath uh, our umbrella. And give us a little, uh, uh a guesstimate from uh, capacity under management. We're here at EMC World talking about storage. What, what are we looking at for capacity? Yeah, good question, good question. Um, well, our SAP environment, the production SAP environment we have is about 1.5 terabytes of the database itself. Um, total online storage that we have as a company is around 60 terabytes um, that we provide through file shares for other uh, Oracle environments, SAP, uh, the SQL environments, different things like that. We have about uh, 200 physical servers about 300 virtual servers right now. And uh, actually those physical servers, just like most places with the advent of virtualization, our physical now, uh, numbers of servers are going down quite dramatically. Uh, this, this was actually the second year in a row that our power and cooling usage in our, data, our main data center actually went down. We're actually pulling out racks that we had in the uh, data center that were full at one time. And what do you attribute that to? Some virtualization, anything to do with yeah. your storage infrastructure? Mostly virtual, virtualization and um, also with the ability with some of the new storage devices that we have, like the VNX platform and 
some of the tiered storage that we're doing and the, and the uh, flash first type of uh, methodology that we're using allows us to do more with less. So we have uh, more disk, but we can provide it to more uh, sources and clients and servers because it is higher capacity, uh, more performance. And what, what percentage are you running from, a, from your flash infrastructure in your tiered stack? What percentage would you say is flash? Um, right now it's probably 15% and it's really focused on our SAP area. We expected uh, when we installed our VNX and started with the tiered storage that we were going to have to add some more flash at some time for performance and actually as we ran in, in production and we've got some real world numbers on it, we actually need a lot less flash than we thought uh, with the performance. Yep, yep. So and that, is that primarily for your SAP applications? Or? Correct, yep. 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 Our, um, we're, we're looking at now rolling out a VDI implementation uh, across the company. Um, we're in a pilot right now, we've got about 100 users, we're looking to roll out about 500 VDI uh, sessions throughout the company. Uh, that one, as we're sizing that out, that might be our first all flash array that we buy for specifically for VDI. That's one of the reasons why I'm here is to learn more about uh, some of the new flash technology that EMC has and, and uh, with some of their IO Extreme and some of the different uh, partners that they have the different hardware they're bringing to the table, how it's all going to integrate and look for the future. So, so how do you, how are you kind of distinguishing within your infrastructure based on different type of work, workloads? How are you kind of parsing all that out? Uh, good question. Right now, um, we really separate out SAP by itself. So we built a, a separate environment for SA, SAP utilizing uh, Cisco UCS for the compute side. Uh, VMware on the virtualization and then a VNX on the back end, the one that, that we have with the tiered storage in there with the flash cache, or fast cache and, and fast VP uh, for storage. That we keep separate. Now, uh, and that's more just an SAP way of doing things. We've been running SAP about 10 years now, and in the past, actually when we first implemented SAP, we had a lot of performance issues. And it took a while for us to figure out what was going on. We had a lot of great partners that came in and helped, but it was basically we were I.O. bound at, this, at the system we had in place. Um, that was a non-EMC non SAN. When we brought in SAP to come in and help us, they looked at our store subsystem and how we had it set up, and right away they're like, you guys should really look at EMC. And that's really what brought EMC into the door for us. So EMC came in, and because of the past history we have, it's more of a political thing at the company, honestly. We have a separate array just for SAP. Then we have another array, a uh, si similar setup, uh, a VNX as well, for the green hack, what we call our, our non-SAP environment. So we have a, a separate virtual uh, infrastructure with uh, VMware ESX on there that runs the majority of our non-SAP applications. Tuning that's a lot, is a little more difficult. Um, that one, we really look at a lot of the performance tools that EMC gives us and the performance tools that are built into Windows to help us size and look at different things and how we need to partition drives and, and move the data load around. So Jeff, you know, you brought, um, you know, you talk about separating the signal for the noise. I get really excited when I hear conversations like this because this is really industry practitioner stuff that you guys are doing every single day. That I think a lot of our constituency, a lot of folks that that want to hear about what's going on. So, you know, you brought up a VDI implementation. How far down the road are you with that implementation? I know a lot of our our uh, listeners are looking about looking at VDI, thinking right. about it. You know, kind of what are some of the decision making processes you went through to why you want to do it? and now kind of the next steps, sure. so to speak. Oh, great question. Um, one of the things that really um, VDI brings to the table for us that we're very impressed with and, and looking forward for in the future is because we're running SAP and we have a, a very sophisticated manufacturing floor environment, we're a very lean organization, so it's one piece flow. We don't have a lot of inventory. What that means in SAP land is we have lots of terminals on the shop floor running our SAP. Uh, system so our, our manufacturing employees can go in and key in what they need, they know exactly what's going on, they can scan, barcode scan in, do confirmations, uh, look at work orders, look at what's coming down the road, uh, down the pipe that they can prepare for. That said, we have about 500 shop floor terminals on our manufacturing in our Schofield facility and across our company. Um, we have about one and a half million square feet of manufacturing. So that, those 500 PCs are all over the place. As we implemented SAP over the last 10 years, we looked at it and went, well, the SAP um, GUI client is a very thin client. It's perfect for VDI. And our shop environment's a very dirty, dusty, there's welding, grinding that takes place. And we have a pretty quick, or pretty uh, mean time, or pretty high mean time between, or I'm sorry, pretty low mean time between failures on a lot of our hardware because of the environment they're in. 
So we're looking at thin clients and the ruggedness of them and VDI in the back end, and we knew that we were going to have to roll out 500 PCs replacements in the next year. Uh, because we are a lean staff, we don't have the people for it. So we spent the last eight to nine months um, testing out VDI to really see if it was worth it. Um, we kind of, in, in our opinion, we're kind of behind the boat on a lot of this. We're kind of waiting for the bleeding edge people to take over and, and to really look at the, the VDI environment as a whole and hopefully let someone else worry about the bugs. Uh, it's actually worked out much better than we ever thought it would. Uh, the performance has been very good. Uh, we're buying thin client devices that are ruggedized, that go on the shop floor. Um, so now we're going to be able to roll out VDI with these silly little boxes. You just plug them in. We can have anybody deploy them. You're not using a, a, a high-end uh, desktop person to run around and plug things in. We can hand them out to anybody and just color code everything and plug them in and, and we're good to go. Um, then some of the other benefits we get with VDI is keeping all of our data in our data center. Keeping it all in, in, in our cloud, um, and then at the time, if we're looking at higher workloads or different things, we'll have the ability to burst to the cloud then and utilize that hybrid technology um, to partner with uh, different cloud providers to kind of help offset some of that compute power if we need it. That's really what we looked at, and the nice thing is, is that that was what we, we uh, tested out with the procedure or the, the project itself, and then some of the intangibles that came along with it um, for our mobility clients having uh, a, a single DDI session that they can access from their phones, from their iPads, whatever it might be, um, was a real plus for us as well. And that's what we get a lot of momentum of. And we kind of use it as a two-stage approach. That's a, that's a great use case. I've, I've met with a lot of clients having worked for a number of different storage vendors, and you hear a lot of people talk about VDI, but a manufacturing floor, what a great, what, mm -hmm. I, I, never, I don't know that I ever would have thought of that, but what a great place, because you do have you know, all those issues that you have to deal with. Right. Um, fantastic, thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah, we could dig in, uh, I wanted to dig in on Flash a little bit. Sure. Data centers, cloud, we can go forever and ever and ever, but unfortunately we're getting the hook. I, there's, <laughs> there's just not enough cube here at the, even two cubes is not enough, not Steve. Enough we'll right. have to get three cubes next year. So thanks for coming by, so we'll look you forward bet. to following up the conversation. Uh, so this is Jeff Frick with Steve Kinston at EMC World 2014. You're on theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.